From a macronutrient standpoint, uh, plants depend upon three primary mineral nutrients for macronutrition, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Arguably, nitrogen could be called the most important of the macronutrients because it impacts so many different metabolic processes in the plant. Uh, nitrogen is an essential component of plant structure, so it's required to build plant tissue. Uh, nitrogen is a, a, an integral component of DNA, so it's required for reproductive success of the plant. Uh, nitrogen is also, uh, although phosphorus is often associated with energy transfer in the plant, nitrogen is also a critical component of energy transfer, but probably one of the more important pieces uh, that nitrogen is more often affiliated with is chlorophyll. So it's really uh, essential uh, component structurally of the chlorophyll molecule, which enables plants to capture sunlight energy and create grain. And so uh, nitrogen literally touches every metabolic process in the plant. Uh, the plant simply cannot optimize yield without it. All of our soils have organic matter. It's something we all treasure. And the higher the organic matter of the soil, many times the more productive the soil is. That's partly because it can hold water better. And it's also because that organic matter includes some nitrogen. In fact, about 5% of it is nitrogen. It's in the organic form, and so plants can't immediately reach out and grab it and take it up. If they did, we wouldn't really need to use fertilizer, but we would also run out of it fairly quickly. The process by which organic matter makes its nitrogen available is a, a biological process. It takes microbes in the soil to break this down and to release it. So we call it mineralization. You turn the organic form into a mineral form that the plants can take up. We're adding fertilizer nitrogen to bring it up to the level that we need, getting the right amount of nitrogen to the crop, making sure there's not a deficiency, but also making sure that we're just not putting on a great excess is a very delicate balancing act. And it's not as easy as people think it is. And so if we've done a good job of trying to take into account the soil nitrogen and then what fertilizer we put on and we do it carefully, trying to make sure that there's enough for the crop but not too much, of course nitrogen losses really can, can sort of wreck that. And that's a problem. It's one of the many uncertainties there are regarding nitrogen nutrition. There are different fertilizers, of course. There are some natural nitrogen fertilizers you can dig out of the earth somewhere, but the supply of those is simply not practical. We could not produce crops on nearly as many acres if we had to rely on those, or if we ruled them out altogether, any uh, fertilizer materials, then we'd simply live with very low yields uh, across the earth. We don't see an alternative to the, using this large supply of processed uh, fertilizers uh, to produce crops in the world today. Another large pool of nitrogen in the soil is organic nitrogen that comes either from applied livestock manures, uh, legume plants that fix atmospheric nitrogen, or crop residues that we've recently uh, harvested from. And this nitrogen uh, tends to be more stable uh, it's much more slower release, and so uh, it can be difficult to predict when it's going to be made available to the crop uh, and in what quantity. But uh, the microbial community, as the soils warm up, uh, tend to liberate nitrogen from that pool and make it available uh, naturally to the crop. Those soils very high in organic matter are not always responsive to applied fertilizer in. Uh, because in certain seasons, the microbial community liberates a lot of nitrogen out of that natural pool. Uh, the, the difficulty is we aren't always able to predict uh, what that amount will be, and so we have to fertilize uh, to uh, a recommendation that will optimize crop yield without depending upon that pool to be liberated. Now some people are doing very well with organic production, but you depend very heavily on the soil that you have to start with in those cases. and. Uh, in many cases, it's substituting, say, extensive tillage. Trying to do without mineral fertilizers is uh, admirable, and it works very well on a small scale. 
it would not keep our corn yields uh, as high as they have been. When it comes to common forms of nitrogen fertilizer that would be applied to the cropping system, one of the big ones that we, that we often start with is anhydrous ammonia. It is a very economical and very effective source of nitrogen. Of course, as soon as uh, anhydrous is a gas at atmospheric pressure, and so it has to be stored in compressed uh, systems to convert it to a liquid and then directly injected below the soil surface in order to avoid it uh, being lost to the atmosphere. The most common dry form that we would experience uh, in North America would be urea. Uh, and urea is a carbon containing uh, a compound that has to be hydrolyzed uh, in the soil by the urease enzyme uh, in order to liberate the ammonium and make it plant available. The third form of N uh, that is most common in, in North America would be liquid nitrogen, also known as urea ammonium nitrate or UAN. And it's sometimes also referred to as 28 or 32, uh, which re refers to the percentage of nitrogen uh, in the product. And so when we put UAN in the soil, uh, it is half of the nitrogen in UAN is derived from urea, uh, one fourth is derived from ammonium, and one fourth uh, derived from nitrate. The nitrogen cycle is very complex, which makes it somewhat difficult to understand. And it is a very dynamic system, which means that it's hard to track where nitrogen goes in the soil. And so as agronomists, we often think primarily in terms of adding fertilizer nitrogen to the cropping system. And that nitrogen usually comes in the form of either ammonium or nitrate. Uh, it can be delivered in the form of urea, which has to be hydrolyzed to ammonium. But once it enters the soil environment, we're, we're primarily talking about ammonium and nitrate. Uh, both of those forms of nitrogen are available for plant uptake. And in fact, ammonium is a more efficient form of N for the plant to take in, because if the plant absorbs nitrate N, it has to reduce that nitrate into ammonium to make protein in the plant anyway. So it requires another metabolic uh, expenditure of energy uh, for the plant to reduce that nitrate. Ammonium doesn't move in the soil very fast, or in many cases doesn't move at all. And that's because it has a positive charge as an ion, and the soil has a negative charge, and so those attract, and it simply stays where it's placed in the soil. Which is a good thing from the standpoint that it is not lost from the soil system, it's retained by the soil, but it's a negative for plant uptake because it's less mobile, and so the plant is less able to take it in. And so nitrification is the process of converting ammonium to nitrate. We tend to think of nitrification as being inherently uh, a bad process in the soil, but in, in reality, it's a vital and necessary process because we need to take that, that ammonium that's adsorbed to the CEC, convert it to nitrate so that that nitrate is soluble in the soil water and can move more readily to the plant roots for uptake. Uh, about 80% of plant nitrogen is actually taken into the plant via the form of nitrate for that reason. Organic matter uh, has really high uh, nutrient uh, exchange capacity, so it has the ability to bank a uh, significant amount of nutrients, and it also improves soil structure, uh, water infiltration, water holding capacity. Uh, it's truly, uh, again, that uh, magic ingredient that uh, makes for truly highly productive soils. Many decisions in farming are about managing risk, and one of the largest risks that farmers face is weather uncertainty. Nitrogen loss is highly dependent upon the weather that happens after application, and of course we can't perfectly predict what that weather will be. One of the ways that nitrogen can move through the soil and be lost to the crop is through leaching. Leaching is the loss of nitrate nitrogen with the movement of soil water downward through the soil profile. Uh, to the point where it goes below the rooting zone and it is unable to be taken up by the plant. Volatilization loss is the loss of nitrogen to the atmosphere as ammonia gas. Now urea that we apply to the soil, it converts fairly quickly to ammonium and carbon dioxide. It simply breaks down uh, quickly in the soil to that. The problem is if, the, if it's lying on top of the soil, or isn't incorporated into the soil when that happens, that process can release ammonia from the urea. 
Denitrification is the loss of nitrate in to microbes who use nitrate to respire in the absence of oxygen when the soil gets saturated. If we get heavy rainfall or saturated soils, then we worry about the denitrification process. And that simply means it took nitrate and turned it back into uh, nitrogen gas. So we often get the question from growers, how do I protect my nitrogen investment against those losses? Uh, one of the best ways that, that we can think about that is to utilize the 4R nitrogen management construct. 4R stands for right source, right rate, right timing, and right placement. Uh, when you think about all those four factors and the various ways that we can apply nitrogen, uh, there are almost an infinite number of combinations of nitrogen applications that we can use to, to manage the cropping system, and many of them work very well.